Welcome back to another episode of the Dodgeball Dudes. Welcome back to another episode of the Dodgeball Dudes. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Dodgeball Dudes. I'm here with Sam. <laughs> and we're gonna go for some catching tips. Sam, Sam, you're a very good catcher. Do you have any tips for beginners? The most important thing is your, your positioning. You need to be able to position yourself really well to be able to get that catch. You're not going to be able to get a catch to you know, turning your back, for example. A lot of people, when they dodge, they turn their back. But it's really about getting yourself in a good position. Square up on your body. Everyone has a different type of uh, catching momentum. What does squaring up mean? So your catching zone. You've got to yep. figure out where it is. So for my catching zone, it's around this area. So I like to square up my body yeah. and I angle my body to where the ball is coming. And my hand is like this so that I can react to actually try to catch. You want to be straight on, chest up, staring at your opponent. Scare them and they'll throw slower. That's mm. it. Or they'll throw faster and you'll get into their heads. <laughs> I always tell the girls to move on court as if you're like, kind of like a crab because then you're always square ah, towards like the this, opponent. Like this. Left and right, left and right. Always. Okay. Always. Always. And if a person turns or like kind of like does, does this weird shit and um, spin, I, I smack them. Catching. Catching techniques, tips. I'm a non-catcher. You are a catcher. No, I am not. Roll those clips. let it hit me and then hopefully my reflexes will hold the ball in. Yeah, that's true. It's all about how you react. If you blink, you cut the connection between your hand and your body and your eyes to what's happening in front of you. You think it sounds simple, like, oh, just keep your eyes open, yeah. but often people don't. Yeah, you turn it's around, true. They, they shake their head, you keep your head still, keep your eyes open, you increase your chance of surviving by a lot. Have you seen the uh, Tom and Jerry where he's trying to oh, stay the, away? Yeah, he's like, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, just do that, do that. And it's like this. That works, yeah, it's just like, let's go. <laughs> I'm ready for dodge sure. <laughs> I know you're a catcher, man. You, you go for catches. I've been told. <laughs> what have you been told? I've been told. I catch the catch from the heart. Catch from the heart. What does that mean? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. Just in the moment, you see the ball, it's coming at you, and you just... Just, just, re just go for it, right? Just hug it. Yeah, so James is... Just do it. Can you do this for me? <laughs> just do it. Just... <laughs> We're doing a episode on catching and I call you the, the vortex, the black hole. I hate throwing at you. Some people do. <laughs> do you have any tips for beginners? Just let the ball hit you, really. Keep your arms sort of like in to the side and let it hit your chest or stomach mm. and really close those hands really fast. A lot of people like to say, you know, if I've got a smaller frame, how do I catch? It's a little bit hard because it just bounces off me. It's really got to do with letting the ball kind of soak into you. I mm. like the mentality. Like so absorbing it. Correct, yeah. So kind of curving your body a little bit and then letting it sink into you. Sometimes if you move back into the catch, you can absorb the momentum, yeah. makes it easier to catch. Another thing is like keeping yourself small as possible. Because a lot of times when you dodge, you sort of tuck and you know, it's harder to catch when it's going here. Pretty much just allowing the ball to come to you, to hit you and then react to it. I've had a lot of accidental kind of catches where like I would move and it would hit my thigh and because my hand's already moving like this, it gets stuck. I feel like if it happens a lot, it's not an accident. So it's basically yeah. you kind of sort of fly. It comes towards you and you're like, no, <laughs> I got you. When I think of catching, it's like hugging a giant big teddy bear. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Like this. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. Okay. What not to do when you go for a catch? <laughs> Reach. <laughs> Don't try to reach. Try not to reach. A lot of times people start reaching, like, you know, swinging out this way, and it's already past your shoulder, like, you don't need to reach out that way. Yeah. Reaching out for where the ball would have not hit you, that always causes a risk for getting hit. Because if you reach, you might break your finger, and you definitely don't want to do that. Yeah. So normally you have a catching zone, and you try to keep your arms tucked in. If it, it goes high, then you can't reach, but sometimes you can't help it. You shouldn't reach because you can get your fingers uh, broken. I've broken my pinky twice. Not because I reach, but because I was unlucky. <laughs> Twice! So, <laughs> don't be unlucky. Uh, don't be unlucky, yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, I've got like fish fingers, so they're really hard to jar. Yeah. The second thing is confidence. If you look at them, think to yourself, you're gonna catch their ball. Just have confidence. Think you can catch it and the ball's yours. Yeah. That's it. I know some people that like yell catch before they catch it, envisioning the catch before they do it. Basketball, if you just take a three shot, it's like that, right? If you picture it going in, then it'll go in. Same thing with catching. Just picture it coming into your arms and that's it. Just believe in yourself and then you know you can catch it. And that's it. What I tend to find is you pick a player that you're gonna look at who you think is gonna throw at you most and you're focusing on that and that ball coming through you mm -hmm. first. 
That way your vision is sort of, you're still observing the court with some court awareness, but your focus is on one that you think is gonna be the accurate thrower coming straight to your chest. I will most likely be positioning myself in front of the person who's the most accurate person because they're not likely gonna be missed and they're likely to go for center mass more often. Yeah, it's actually so true because you need to account for more accurate players to get it, yeah. You do. Yeah, which is very interesting. A lot of players, they throw very straight. Yeah. It's easier to catch. Yeah. But some players, they do like some funky throws yeah. and then like a curse. So yeah. I will never go for that. Yeah. For beginners, yeah. the best thing to do is to track the ball. The idea is to always look at who do you think is going to throw and try and track the ball down. Certain players have certain swings on the ball. Like you line up with your shoulder. If you see it coming with your shoulder and it's coming that way, then you can just stay still. But once you see it out that way, you want to just get out of the way. So you're using your eye sight and you're lining with your shoulders to the, the path of the ball. For me, tracking is different because I try and not look at the ball. I try and avoid the shot. So I'm an easy target. So people take speed off and accuracy on. Ah. So you're not paying attention and then you do turn to take the yeah. catch. It's something that will develop as you play a couple more games in a season or two. You start realizing how people come up to throw. So you can start picking the players or the teams that will come forward and they're gonna throw or they're gonna fake. And then you, you know the next person's gonna throw on the second one. So you're waiting for that second one. That first one's not even on your radar. Yeah. That's how you start. You keep an eye out for that as you're beginning mm. to start picking up patterns. Mm. And from those patterns, you're able to assess what's gonna happen coming at you. Mm. Oh, so good value. Actually, I find when I think and go for a catch, I actually miss the catch. There you go. So think less. Is that a bad tip? No, not at all. I think like it gets too in your head and you like fumble it a bit. But yeah. like if it's just coming and you're just relaxed, you just hug it. Yeah. And you're like, oh, hello. Occasionally, if I'm last on court or I can see a person like about to throw at me, I'll drop my ball on purpose. Yeah. When I'm like the last one in, sometimes I do do that. Like pretend that I'm trying to throw, yeah. but then just go for a catch. Yeah. They'll actually, occasionally they'll stop. Or if not, then I'm already prepared for the catch. So I get that extra kind of two seconds to respond to them. There is a technique called hard carry. So if you throw out the ball carrier right in front of you, you're positioned to catch the second counter. After I throw, I look like an open target, but then I turn around and face straight away because yeah. I'm expecting a counter. And the person close to you on the right, they can't counter you because they're busy blocking that ball. After you throw, your ball is gone. So just think about what's going to happen next. For me, I can't dodge, so I commit to catches. Commit to it, commit. If you want to catch, just commit to uh, it. Yeah. Believe in your result. Believe in yourself. There you go. <laughs> Don't kind of just pull back last minute as well like if you're kind of getting yourself into that position and then last minute you kind of turn off to the side that's not what you or, want to do or maybe it's more like knowing when to commit yeah right because if you overcommit at a bad decision then you, you've got to sort of screwed yourself over you commit to a hand, yeah you're committing to getting out i think most people avoid hands because they, they no. don't want to get out yes. yeah. yeah yeah that's why so i told like, i yeah. told peter before like people that is known as catches yeah is like actually so crazy because they've yeah. probably sacrificed their life so many times learning how to yeah. catch and all that stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. What not to do when going for a catch? What not to do when going for a catch? Not see the ball. Don't not see the ball, James Foo. <laughs> You prefer to also be standing whilst you're catching, not planted, hey, not on your knees. Depends on the scenario. Yeah. It's good to be able to try to train your, your catches when you're standing and you're planted, but it's also good whenever you drop because you make yourself a small kind of target. Yeah. And so if someone's really accurate or like mostly accurate, they aim at that tiny little spot yeah. and you're really small, yeah. you'll usually be able to pocket it. Just pocket it, yeah. yeah. It's also a good point if you do catch often and you're kind of standing up, people will kind of be hyper aware and be like, oh, she's going to catch me, so I'm not going to throw here. Yeah. I'm gonna throw her knees. And then at the last tiny little second, if you drop, it's an easy pocket. Oh, true. And the last one we have is any uh, catching drills. Me and my team, we do this drill where we stand really, really close to each other and we just like, peg the ball. Yeah. Wait, can I swear? Yeah, yeah, you can okay. swear. We and beg the ball <laughs> at each other at like chest level and we just like practice that motion, you yes. know, of catching. Eventually it gets to a point where I'm like, what's the worst that can happen? Just hits you in the face. You let it hit your chest and you just go for it? Yeah, that what, pretty yeah. much. And I remember doing this for men's or minnows training where it's to condition your body so you're not scared of a ball yeah. hitting you, right? Yeah. Your eyes open the whole time Correct. and just let it hit you and just... Yeah, yeah, so your eyes are always open and then essentially, even if it hits your body, there's a lot of chances it pops up as well. So yeah. if it's not a you catching it, someone else in your team could yeah. catch it as well. Just get your accurate throwers to throw at you. Throwing two balls, one on the side of you and you just 
picking which one you want to catch, like, you know, seeing one sort of go that way and then you're like focusing on one ball and catching mm. rather than like, you know, you're getting flustered by too many balls because at the end of the day, there's going to be two or three balls faking at you. So you want to start learning how to square on to a certain ball. Yeah. Reaction timing, so hands behind back or uh, turning around, things like that. Yeah, just yeah. so reaction gets picked up because that's a big thing as well. Because if you're getting hit, you're reading it, but if you're not reacting to it quick enough, then you're not catching anything. Yeah. I personally, something that I haven't seen many do, but I like doing, and that is having two balls when I warm up yep. and I'm throwing one against the wall, catching it with my left hand. It gets my eye in, so I'm getting used to a quick reflex. So I'm just watching the ball as it comes mm. towards me. Mm. I really enjoy that as a warm up for myself. Mm. Beyond that, in your warm up, you have two people with two balls, you're throwing at each other. So you're working on your accuracy as well as your response. Mm. So you're learning to catch when something else is going on. True, that is true. Because otherwise, you're just waiting for the ball to come to you in your warm up. Yeah. And you know, you know it's coming to you. It's way too easy. Yeah. If you get it, awesome. If you don't, but you've got to focus on more. That's actually really good. I like to be very creative in the way we train and stuff like that. Recently, I've uh, got an addiction to uh, Nerf guns. Nerf gun. Yeah, that's true. Right, that's so true. Yeah. I'm buying Nerf guns not to play with them, but basically use that as a basically a reflex training. Yes. So I think you know, in terms of normal catching drills, a lot of teams know what to do about that. But I think also thinking about being creative in the way you train and utilizing you know tricks and trades from different sports yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I feel helps elevate my game yeah. rather than just training for dodgeball. Like. Yeah, that's true. The last one, just practice. Like if you want to be good at catching and you honestly feel confident with your other abilities like throwing and dodging, get your friends to throw at you. Just continue to practice. Get used to the fact that the ball's coming at you. Try catching in different positions, so standing or sitting down, squatting down. For me, I had a background in cricket, so I got a little bit of a head start. Yep. So that's how it is. But always, yep. you're strong throwers. If you're not afraid to track the ball down and to catch him, you'll be able to catch anyone. Mm. How'd you get better? Just game time, really. Just game time, just actually play dodgeball. Yeah, Sign up uh, to dodgeball, play dodgeball, and try catching.